Alright, in this video we'll talk about soil structure. So soil structure is the grouping together of the individual soil particles to form compound particles, which we call aggregates or PEDs. So this is the grouping of those soil particles. Soil particles would be our sand, silt, and clay separates. So often in soil, if you look at it, you know, it's not individual little particles. There's different clumps in there. And that is the structure of the soil. It's how those aggregates or PEDs are shaped and formed. The importance of soil structure relates to uh, many aspects um, similar to you know the porosity, uh, we have root penetration, water and air movement, erosion, bulk density, and then uh, also the compactability or weight bearing ability of that soil. So soil structure is made, cemented by many different things in soil. Uh, microbial activity is a really important one, and we can actually use soil structure, shape, and strength to estimate microbial activity. Uh, the humus content, clay content, and then different um, oxides and chemical components uh, can affect how well those stick together, which we'll see here. So um, calcium, uh, having a plus two charge, will actually hold clay separates together. But sodium, with just a plus one charge, will attach to the clay and then push against another sodium, and so it can actually be a dispersant. Um, this can be important when we talk about uh, regions where salt is used for ice management. Um, it's worth it to spend a little extra and get something with calcium, magnesium, instead of using sodium, because all of that salt will run off um, the roads and often ends up in our soil. So our aggregates or PEDs are classified based on their shape, the strength of their bond, and their size. So the shape of aggregates are their type, so granular, prismatic, or columnar. On the top here we have our granular soil, then we have um, a platy soil, angular blocky, subangular blocky, columnar, and prismatic. So prismatic and columnar are taller than they are wide, and the difference is the top. So prismatic has a flat top, and columnar has a rounded top. Um, angular blocky and subangular blocky, roughly the same size particles. Uh, it's just the sharpness of their edges that we're looking at. And then granular um, is smaller, and more well-rounded in all sides. So the structure grade, um, the bonding strength between the individual particles are attached. Um, so the grades are structureless, weak, moderate to strong. And then often we see an increasing in clay as we see an increase in the structure strength. On the left, we have uh, two soils before wetting. One is high in organic matter, and the other is low in organic matter. And then after wetting and letting the soil sit for a while, we see the high organic matter soil retains its structure, while the low organic soil has lost its structure. So the importance of organic matter in holding on to that structure. Uh, same idea here, we have two soils. Um, the one on the left here has been tilled uh, lost a lot of organic matter and frequent turnover. And the one on the right is in more natural soil with a granular structure. See all those roots flowing through there and just their ability to maintain that porosity and growing ability as a result of the organic matter. Uh, this chart is a little blurry, but uh, talks about the period of cultivation. So the longer a field is cultivated, so 15 years of cultivation versus 100 years of cultivation, we see a decrease in organic matter from 4.2% to 0.7%. Uh, an associated decrease in aggregate stability and a decrease in water infiltration and um, the amount of water that falls before we see ponding on the soil surface. So mismanagement of agricultural lands can lead to a decrease in organic matter, 
which decreases our aggregate strength so that when it rains, those rain droplets can destroy the aggregates on the surface of the soil, resulting in higher rates of ponding and less infiltration, which leads to more runoff and then also a drier soil. So your crops will do poorer or require more irrigation. Uh, structure destroyed by raindrops on bare soil. Never want bare soil. Um, destroyed by tillage and traffic and then rapid wetting and freezing can also break apart those structures too. Um, can anyone think of some ways that soil structure might be improved? So soil structure can be improved by organic matter, which helps um, glue those aggregates together as well as increase microbial activity, which helps glue those aggregates together. Planting vegetation with different root systems, so different depths of roots, um, root turnover increases organic matter. Earthworms, um, wetting, drying, freezing, thawing, and then ground cover. So whether that is residue, um, whether you know in a field that can be laying down any crop residue after harvest, or in an urban setting, mulching or vegetation, just something to keep the soil covered at all times. The effects of humus or organic matter on soil structure, so it increases aggregation which increases water infiltration and retention, and then it also increases nutrient content and retention. And so the loss of organic matter is a big concern in soil management, whether that is in agriculture, so maintaining organic matter through agricultural practices, or in an urban setting, a lot of times that topsoil that's removed um, contains mostly organic matter, and then not enough is put back on site for plant and tree growth. All right, so that is soil structure, and then we will talk about plant-available water in the next video.